Hello there and welcome to Jay, Jay Painting. I am JJ and what do we do on this channel? Well we talk about the hobby. Sometimes it's a retrospect of the model range, sometimes it's a battle company challenge, sometimes it's a top and bottom five list, just like today. So there's a bit of something for everyone no matter what you're into. So as you can tell from today's video we're going to talk about the firstborn of the Space Marines. So these are the original Space Marines in many respects for those of you who are still relatively new and for those of you who remember back in the day where the tactical squad was supreme this is about them so as you may remember last year I did a video about the top of bottom five Primaris units and just like then this isn't me saying that any of these units are bad these are units that I take the subjective amount of fun and the subjective amount of use I would get from them when I'm playing the game and obviously we're talking about firstborn so we need to be very careful in terms of what we paint today so we're gonna be painting this model here which is obviously not a firstborn space marine just to make sure that everyone's nice and safe and looked after so without further ado Let's crack on and talk about the top and bottom five firstborn Space Marines. Fifth worst, the Vindicators. A lot of tanks really did lose out substantially when it came to 8th and 9th edition, and the Vindicator was definitely up there. Now, some tanks such as the Lehman Russ and even the Defiler have gotten other things going for them, which allow them to mitigate the fact that their main weapons are no longer as powerful. On the one hand, for the Defiler, it's a close combat vehicle, and for the Lehman Russ, it can have other types of guns that aren't blast weapons. But obviously, for all those who remember the days of template weapons, there was always an inexact science and always a debate as to how broken or how balanced they were. But with the blast rules as they are now, most vehicles often need to have something else aside a blast weapon to be considered effective unless you're fighting against a large horde army. And Vindicators are no exception. Now obviously you could argue that a Vindicator on a lucky day it's a better anti-tank vehicle than it ever really is an anti-infantry vehicle nowadays. And to an extent that's true. But that does rely on a lot of luck and a lot of random rolls, which unfortunately you just can't guarantee at the moment. But don't let me give you the impression that it's bad. It does still have its uses, but unfortunately it just isn't what it used to be, even with the bonus to its armor save. Fifth best, the drop pod. Now the drop pod has been around for the Space Marines for an incredibly long time. And ironically, its plastic kit is actually quite young, only coming out in 2008, having been a Forge World vehicle for many years before then. But I think it's one of those things which has very nicely married the warring factions of lore and gameplay at a very early point in 40k, way back in 4th edition and, and even into 5th and 6th edition. The drop pod was one of those vehicles which added a lot to the game and added a lot to Space Marines, giving them a rather unique way of playing which other armies simply do not have and to this day really don't have. There really is nothing more satisfying than seeing a whole army coming down in drop pods, whether those be the plastic drop pods from Games Workshop or the, the resin Forge World drop pods for Dreadnoughts. And incidentally, Games Workshop, why do we still not have drop pods for Dreadnoughts in the main codex just yet? Why is that? That's something I'll be covering in another video another time, I'm sure. But I do think it's worth giving the drop pods a, a little mention here because they have been a nice little staple for the Space Marines for a very long time. And even though it's a shame that Primaris can't use them, I think by keeping them mainly to the Firstborn does keep Firstborn in the game and gives them that edge that Primaris in many ways can't match, which is quite exciting and quite interesting. Fifth worst, the Hunter Tank. All right, if I'm being completely honest and open here, I do think the Hunter Tank has had a bit of a bad rap for a very long time. It didn't exactly stimulate when it first came out in 2013 and very little over the years has really improved its reputation or its image much. The Icarus tank in the later editions at least has weight of fire which makes it useful against things that aren't aircraft. But for those of you who don't know, the Hunter tank is only got one shot and it's at its best when shooting at vehicles in the sky, so aircraft. Which is nice, but not everyone has aircraft, meaning its use is very situational and very contextual. So unfortunately, it stays down here for not bringing anything new to the table and not being able to be a versatile and useful gaming piece in most games unless you have an opponent who likes using flyers quite a lot in which case go nuts but for those other nine games out of ten you're going to be playing unfortunately you're going to be struggling to find much use for it fourth best let's be honest here a lifetime achievement award going to the tactical squad three cheers really are in order for that um, plucky little unit of workaday space marines that really do not get any credit for the amount of hard work and diligence they put into what they do every day. I did once ask a friend of mine once and we both came to the conclusion that the model that has probably most frequently died in every game of 40k 
probably has to be the Tactical Marine, going right the way back to second or third edition when they first were named as such. Everyone these days is trying to catch the eye of those ditzy new intercessors, but no one stops to thank the Workaday Tactical Marine for all its hard work over the years, so I'm giving it fourth best not only for being something which is still useful in gameplay, not only being the only Space Marine that can still go into virtually every form of transport with the exception of the Primaris ones, but for the fact that in its reliance, in its reliability and the fact that it has changed so little over the years, it ultimately does deserve to be on this list either way. And also the fact that the spin-off units such as Grey Hunters for the Space Wolves and the Crusader Squad for the Black Templars still really are tactical marines at heart. And that really is the basis of what being a Space Marine is all about in many respects, being solid, reliable and dangerous when they need to be. Third worst, sadly, has to go to the Stern Guard. Whilst they do still have some practical application, they are simply too expensive for what you get. Considering that they used to have a plethora of different ways of firing, and having that mechanic now reduced down to just one standard way of firing their bolt guns, which isn't bad, but ultimately it means you're more reliant on buffs from things like lieutenants and captains and chaps tactics to fill in the gaps where before they were perfectly fine with what they had. I know that the Deathwatch kill team very much stole their thunder with their special issue bolt guns, which they now have across their entire army, but it does very much feel like the Stern Guard got left by the wayside and very much left behind so that someone else could play with their toys. A real lost opportunity, I think, for Space Marine players everywhere, and ultimately, when we think about the Intercessors, different types of bolt guns, it's a shame that they still didn't have the option of that. So I'm putting them in third worst here because they become overpriced with no options outside of what they were originally intended to do, and really just do not have what it takes anymore to be the Space Marines we knew and love from back in the days of 4th, 5th and 6th edition. But ultimately, this is just the way things go sometimes. You have to let go of what you love in order to embrace something new. Third best. The Bike Squad. Yes, that plucky little Space Marine Bike Squad which has been hanging around for many, many years over everyone's shoulder. Let's be fair here, it's one of the few units that I think has had a positive reputation and kept it through thick and thin, through fifth and sixth, through every change that's come around. It's a bit of a shame that they can no longer be taken as a troops unit for White Scars armies or armies that have biker captains anymore, but obviously with the detachment rules such as they are, they can be taken as your main army, if you, as your main unit if you really do want to do that, which isn't a bad thing, although in my detachments video I did make the point that they aren't really the best thought out at the moment so there is a bit of a knockback there but ultimately they are still fast they can still have lots of options and they still fit comfortably into virtually every set of chapter tactics that you can think of and let's be fair here in the space of the past five years the space marine bike has tripled its wounds that is a fantastic thing for them to do and they are still relatively cheap considering what you get them get for them these days so that's why they are going to sit here on my top five list moving around speedily jumping over things, doing wheelies, and let's be honest here, some of the finest conversions we've ever seen for the Space Marines, and certainly the most hilarious, have certainly been the Space Marine bikes over the years. So well done bikes, keep up the great work. Second worst. The second worst unit is a unit which really has struggled to find a place for me for many, many years. And it had a few ups and downs as things have gone along, but ultimately the scout squads have really fallen to a new low. When they were a troops unit, they at least had the benefit of being a relatively cheap troop unit, which had some long range capabilities. Yes, they do have a slightly better ballistic skill now than they did previously, but ultimately they sitting there as an elites unit means they are a cheap unit, but there's other things both in the firstborn and primary list that does everything they do so very much better and with the introduction of the infiltrators the eliminators the incursors the reavers there's nothing really the south scout squad has left to offer unfortunately being the last thing in the space marine codex with only one wound and not so many attacks as everyone else the bikes are still all right though but ultimately the scouts themselves i think are on their way out and i hope games workshop are going to do something spectacular with them soon because otherwise maybe it's time for them to be retired but speaking of things that were definitely going to be retired not that long ago, let's talk about my second best unit, and that for me is the Space Marine Vanguard squad. The Space Marine Vanguard really did have ups and downs like everyone else, but theirs have been almost as dramatic as anything else in many ways. When they first arrived in 2008, the close combat orientated Space Marine veterans still weren't thought of as having much to offer. They still only had a very small number of attacks, not that many options, only had one wound, and their special thing was deep striking and being able to assault. Now, of course, this was back in the days before you could assault a deep strike, but also deep striking was a far less exact science so random factors in their early years made them a very unfortunate option that a lot of people simply left and even with the rise of primaris it looks like vanguard veterans were on their way out but not so two wounds shock assault no more randomization 
when it comes to deep striking, take away their jump packs or, and put them in a drop pod, or give them a character to stand next to them, give them lightning claws, thunder hammers, power swords, storm shields, they have all the close combat options you could ever want and more. They fit nicely with virtually every chapter tactic and they are all round a nice solid close combat unit with multiple wounds, lots of attacks and a lot of versatility now that they just simply didn't have. I'd say they're definitely the best they've ever been and they look in slightly better shape ultimately than the Stern Guard squad these days. So Vanguard, you deserve this spot in the top five. Well done for all your hard work and for not giving up. Now, fortunately, when we have to get to this one, my bottom choice, the worst Space Marine unit in that codex. And you know what? Just like a few of the others on this list, if this had been a list I was doing as, even as recently as 2016, this unit would have entered into my top five without any shadow of a doubt. But unfortunately, this is not that time anymore. They came around with a massive amount of interest and flair, and they became a staple of the Space Marine players for a long time, fitting comfortably into virtually every chapter and adding a lot to every army. And I'm sure by now you can probably figure out who this is. If you've been around since 2008, you know that I'm talking about the Thunderfire Cannon. The Thunderfire Cannon's fall from grace has been painful to watch and incredibly sad. As edition after edition of 8th and 9th have come around, it's slowly taken more and more hits. First, you lost the ability to take them in units, then it went from being a respectable strength 6 to a paltry strength 4. The only thing that keeps it even remotely viable in anyone's mind is the fact it has one stratagem. But in my opinion, that makes it worse. The fact that you need to spend points and command points for it to do something which you would hope it could just do anyway. So that's why it's here. May it rest in peace on the shelf. To be fair, it had a good few years and now it is sitting there gathering dust, I'm sure. And anyone out there who still uses Thunderfire Cannons, please do let me know because I want to know what your experience with it has been like. Because for everyone I've known, it's been one disappointment after another until the shelf and eventually oblivion. Getting back to the top five now, we are here. The number one unit, the top unit for this list. And having thought about this very hard, there are a lot of units that qualify for this on many different grounds. But ultimately, when it came down to it, there were only two units I felt that really deserved to reach this space here. The first one was the Vanguard for coming along a very, very long way over the past 12 years. But there's another unit that's been having to rough ride rough rails for even longer, has been in and up and down in people's minds, in and out of tournament lists. Entire armies of these have been taken and dropped at the drop of a hat and ultimately it has been in a state of flux for a long time. But ultimately now it's in a strong spot, the good spot, and it's one of those rare marriages again where the lore and the game have finally matched up in syncopation. Step forward, Terminators. Those tactical dreadnought armoured boys that were meant to be the original first company veterans, the pride of both the Deathwing and the Grey Knights for their unique abilities of being both incredibly dangerous, very versatile and incredibly powerful. The Terminators have come a long way as well, also being a unit to triple the number of wounds it has, but also with how the save system works now, they are both so much better and also so much more tactically viable than they were in previous editions now that there are modifiers to saves, rather than it just being a simple yes or no has made them a far more interesting and far more viable option. Bolter Drill as well has made them a far more viable long range unit allowing them to have firepower in areas they didn't have before and the fact that no matter where you look whether it's Blood Angels, Dark Angels, even the Chaos Marines arguably they are now far more versatile not just because you have the two units that allow you to have either a dedicated close combat or a dedicated ranged unit but also you can now have the Relic Terminators that let you mix and match so you can finally have your Heavy Flamers and your Lightning Claws in the same unit if you're not a Dark Angel or a Space Wolf. Take heed Salamanders players, all your chickens have finally come home to roost. So that's it for my speculative list on the top and bottom five Space Marine units that are firstborn. Let me know your thoughts below. Are there any on this list that you disagree with? Are there any that I missed out? And are there any that you think maybe should be higher or lower on this list? I would very quickly like to give a very special mention for the top five to the Lieutenant, a newcomer to the Space Marines anyway. The one for firstborn has proved to be both very useful and very viable and quite lethal in the right context. But like I always say, thank you for listening and let me know your thoughts. I look forward to hearing from you. So those are my top and my bottom five Space Marines of the Firstborn. So as I'm sure some of you may have your own top and bottom fives list for those, so let me know what they are in the comments below. And whilst you're down there, like, subscribe, all that good YouTube shilly stuff. I post my videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. And whilst you're down there liking and subscribing, check out my links to my website, to my Patreon, and to my Instagram if you just want to see some pictures of toy soldiers. But thank you all very, very much for watching. Have a very nice day wherever you are. Goodbye, and thank you for watching.